It was Abdul who saw off his internet challenger with that final bid. He's been on the show before when he renovated this property in Swaddlingcote, south of Derby. I met him back at the house to find out if this is going to be business as usual. Abdul, good to see you again. Hi, Dion. You've been on the show before. That's correct. You're now a bit of a regular. That's right. But this time, I'd like to find out a little bit more about your business, because you don't buy houses for yourself, you buy houses for clients. Tell us more about what you do. I'm an auction broker. I source discounted properties for clients. OK. Um, there's a few projects that we offer. There's a simple buy-to-let project, and we aim to achieve a 10% of a return. So low investments, high returns. That's okay. the first and easy project that we okay. offer. The second project, it's called a flip project, where, you know, it needs a bit of repairing and we put it back for sale for the, for the investors. The third project that we offer is uh, buying land, submitting the plans and building on it. Tell us about this one then. What's this one? What's this one all about? This one's a flip project. OK. Um, a few doors away, you've seen a sold sign. Mm -hmm. They've achieved almost £100,000. So we've achieved this for 72500 Gotcha. Planning to spend about £10,000, £15,000 on this. OK. Refurbishing the whole place and put it back on the market. Uh, we're expecting to get this place ready in about two months' time. Gotcha. So, bring in the builders, fix it, and sell it on for him. With a ceiling price in the area of £120,000, getting a 20 grand return for his client and making a bit of profit himself, Abdul hasn't left himself much room for error. But he's confident that his client has made a good investment. This property was sourced for an investor from Leicester. You know, with Leicester, it's like London. The prices are just too high, the return's about 4 or 5%. It doesn't attract uh, the investors to be, you know, investing, buying properties in Leicester. Uh -huh. So I managed to convince them to buy this property. Um, if we also rent this property out, we, we can still achieve 10% of a return. But his aim is to flip it on and quickly earn that 10, 15,000 pounds. We were thinking of uh, having an ensuite as well uh, in one of the rooms. Ah, you see. But then that builds uh, the cost up. Of course. And, um, we're very careful with investors' money, so. I think we're not going to go with an on-street. OK, and there isn't any off-street parking at the moment, but I have seen off-street parking in the area. That's correct, yeah. Any thoughts of maybe doing that? Um, that's going to bump the cost up again if we uh, bring in uh, a drive. So um, we've decided not to go ahead with that. So how did you find this particular property? We work in hand with a few auction firms. We sometimes snap properties prior to auction for mm -hmm. our clients, but this one was uh, snapped uh, on the bidding day. And you find the bargains? I find the bargains for them, yes. <laughs> Good luck. I hope this one becomes a bargain for your clients. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. Thank you. Five yeah. months later, we are back. You already know I got my So far, I do love it. The fresh modern kitchen is finished well and the added breakfast bar is a nice touch. But what about next door in the bathroom? Well, it's a big improvement with a bath and overhead shower. I like that. It gives the new owner a choice in the space available. Through to the front room now and the gas fire has been removed. The chimney breast remains and I think that diagonal wall is crying out for a big television. The new combi boiler means that some space is available upstairs. But Abdul stuck to his plans and kept it simple. So no en suite, but there is one added feature. Abdul decided to make this small cupboard a dressing area and even added his own mood lighting. This house looks smart and streamlined, but I can't help thinking an ensuite would have been nice. But Abdul and his client, they'd done the figures and they just didn't stack up. You see, when it comes to us, if we're flipping a property, it all comes down to figures. Um, we could fit an ensuite, it would add about three, five thousand pounds to the cost, uh, but we could not coop that back. There is a seating price in the area, 
and we're very careful with our investors' monies. We treated it like it's own money. So I decided we're not going for an ensuite. He has to make money on this project, so he carries on buying four or five investments a year with myself. Abdul may have had control of the budget, but as we all know, sometimes with renovation projects, not everything is in your control. We had given the builder uh, on this job uh, three months to complete the project. Unfortunately, the builder walked away. When the other builder walked away, I couldn't waste time. I had to jump on the wagon, bring a new builder on board, and just make sure everything's happening. So that's why we've gone over the time scale. But at the same time, the beauty is we've not overspent. You'll be surprised. The budgets come under £10,000. Very impressed. The discipline of having a plan and sticking to it has meant an underspend of 5K. That should make up for the timescale overrunning. As project manager, how does Abdul get good value for money? When it comes to the material, the plastering, etc., we make sure we get the best material for the lowest price. We make sure our investors save money so they make a lot of money when selling the property. Has all that shopping around for materials been worth it? Well, it's time to ask two local estate agents what they think of this property. First, let's hear from the agent who saw it last time. Personally, I feel what the uh, new owner has done is, is, is really what they should have done. Um, there's no need to uh, perhaps go any further with it, but certainly neutral decor, it's well equipped now, will be a good buy for somebody. The standout selling features of the property are really is the finish that it's been done to. Uh, anybody looking to purchase this property could see straight away there's really nothing that needs doing now. There's only one thing left to be done then, and that's to get this property, which has had a total of 82 and a half grand invested in it, on the market. So what kind of figures do the agents think this house could be worth on the sales market? The finish of the property is perhaps slightly better than I anticipated. I feel it's going to be in the region of £115,000. Now the property's been renovated, we would market this at somewhere in the region of £115,000 to £120,000. So it looks like Abdul could break through that £120,000 ceiling price in what is a short space of time. Even the lower agent's valuation could produce a profit of £32,500 before taxes and fees. If Abdul sealed his verbal offer of £130,000, that could mean a pre-tax profit of £47,500. The client has, of course, to pay taxes and Abdul's fee, but it looks as though there's plenty of room for that desired client profit of 10 to 15 grand. The best part of this business is once the projects have come to an end. When I see my investors smiling, that pleases me.